I'm excited that this book has come out. You've got some really top top writers there. I, I don't want to include myself in that, but others are really really remarkable. Uh, and I think it gives it, it it gives an insight about the the why we need to be focusing on the rule of law. So again, it's it's another way of of, of increasing awareness and education about what the rule of law is and why it needs to be protected. And I think this book goes a long way in, in, uh, in helping uh, uh, explain those issues and advocate the importance of the rule of law. So I'm very honored to, be, to have been asked to, to contribute a chapter and, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the book is, is going to do. Well, I think uh, it's particularly important at this time because we're witnessing such a dramatic attack on this principle, uh, probably uh, represented best and I, I think most sadly by what's happening now in Ukraine uh, with, the, uh, with the invasion from Russia. But it also permeates other parts of Europe and the world actually. Uh, where the rule of law is under attack and I think this has been a growing phenomena and so therefore I think the attention by uh, the international community, the legal community, the IBA, I think it's absolutely essential right now that we focus our efforts to see if we can try to counter this trend uh, and that's going to be a real uh, uh, task for and a challenge for all of us. Well, unfortunately, I don't think the developments have been positive. I think, again, reflects the uh, attack on the rule of law. Uh, I think the attacks are manifested primarily by the rise of nationalism and populism. Uh, they're, they're, I think, for me, they're two sides of the same coin, but particularly nationalism that completely uh, ignores uh, the facts, uh, and in doing so, it weakens uh, justice, it weakens accountability, it weakens these very fundamental principles uh, uh, of the rule of law. So again, I think that's the trend uh, that's, uh, that's uh, happening right now and, and we're in the midst of it, uh, which is for me quite striking because uh, particularly after 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall in some sense uh, a, a, a peaceful resolution of the conflicts that emerged during the Cold War, I think everyone felt that we were on a trajectory where the rule of law would be uh, embraced and emboldened by what was happening in Europe. Now we're seeing just the opposite and that's a real challenge for us. I, I'm, I'm not good, uh, I have to say. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see a, a, a real development here. With one exception, I think there is an awareness here. There is an awareness that uh, that uh, totalitarianism is is taking hold in many countries, and that is a death knell to any uh, any attempt to uphold the rule of law. So that's what we're that's what we're witnessing uh, on this. And I don't. It shouldn't be a surprise. I think there has been. Uh, some who have predicted this for a long time. I just never thought I would see it again in, in my lifetime. So that really requires the, the international community uh, to create a, a real robust counter to that. And I think that that probably comes with greater emphasis on education, civil education. Uh, this is something that we have focused a good deal of our time on. Certainly recently, uh, uh, not long ago, we created a series of, uh, of films about, uh, short films about uh, the importance of, of upholding the rule of law and using that as, as in, in more of a social media campaign, uh, uh, educating, gets back to this issue of educating citizens about what the rule of law is about. Uh, and, and the, the tagline is, uh, protect the rule of law because it protects you and that's absolutely right. So I think you're going to continue to see uh, uh, programs, uh, initiatives by the IBA uh, in this area and I think that's exactly where we need to be on this. <laughs>